studios in New York City. This is Charlie Rose. We remember Robin Williams this evening. He was my friend, and he was a friend of this program. He came to this table often. Nobody on the planet could be so spontaneous, so improvisational, so smart as Robin Williams. Simply stated, there was no one like him. In a league of giants, think Letterman and Carson and so many more in television and stand-up and film, he was a unique giant, so talented it took your breath away. He was the guaranteed laugh, so smart and so quick, but impossible to define. If you're in journalism, your instinct is not to praise, but simply to state he was brilliant. He was the brightest star who fell to earth and is now among the stars. Officials will answer the question why he died and how he died. The rest of us simply say, thanks for coming to the table. We will never forget you. The first time he came to this table was 16 years ago. 1998 was the year he would win the Academy Award for his performance in Good Will Hunting. Do you look for this kind of role because oh, yeah. it gives some balance to the kinds of things yeah. that you're going to do? Yeah, because it could... I love being a supporting part. I, that for me, a supporting role is, is extraordinary for me because it, it's two things. It takes the pressure off, but it's also being part of an ensemble. But a, a role like this, because it's... I'd like to try and take a turn, like, you know, to do a movie like Flubber, which is a children's movie, no bones about it, and to do something like this, which is totally the other way. To also play a character that is slightly, it's tough, who is, is slightly, he has his own problems. No, it was a wonderfully complex character, and I, I love to do that. Yeah, it balances it out. I, that's why I always keep trying to do as many different types of things as possible, not one particular type of role. Take me to two places. One is what's going on with your character, because when this guy walks in the room, and then what happens in the relationship? What is it that Sean finally gives Will that makes a difference? Before the first time he walks in, it's like I've, like I said, I've, my wife died a couple of years before. I've been teaching at a, this place called Bunker Hill Community College. I teach, you know, at all different types of psychology classes. I, you know, but I, I've kind of withdrawn. I did go to MIT with Stellan's character, but, you know, I chose, I, you know, he's a Vietnam vet. Stellan is the yeah, math professor, yeah, the genius who won the, the big the prize. Yeah, he's basically the Fields Prize, right. the Fields Medal winner. And basically, he's, you know, he chose a life of, you know, working in the neighborhood, working basically in Boston and working back with the people he grew up with. I mean, in a weird way, he's kind of like, in Matt's character, he wanted to work with the people he knew and, you know, the, the community he grew up in. He's, but he's guarded. He's, you know, he's, he's been through a lot. What he offers Matt's character is a perspective. It's like of saying, you know, and like in the first time when he presses the buttons, when he starts to attack the memory of my wife, it pushes a button that I can't even control myself, and I basically go for him. And I violate the therapeutic relationship in that moment. It's no longer a therapeutic relationship, and that's why, you know, the next session, that, that speech by the Swan Pond, is essentially saying, okay, I know who you are, you know who I am, and you really, you know, you, you messed with my life in a huge way. But I want you to know I know who you are, and I know you need some help. And if you want to work on that, I'd love to help you. But it's up to you, and that's why I say it. And then it just begins, this process of the two of them just talking, you know. The first couple of times, they don't even talk. It's a standoff, you know, where he won't even say anything. And then it works to a point where finally we start, I mean, I have to kind of tell him, you know, we ask him a few questions, and he tells things, and we start to work. And then I start sharing a little bit of myself for some reason with him. The reason probably is that in him, you see yourself. He well, sees in himself, he sees, you know, I see the same, I see the same mind going, and I see yeah. where it could go. It's like that argument that we have with, with Stalin's character in the bar, where he, say, he gives the Einstein thing of, you know, what would Einstein have done if, you know, he didn't need anything, he, he became this great mind. I said, yes, and also the, uh, there's another great mind who lived in Montana named Theodore Kaczynski. So yeah. it's that idea of he needs work. There are things he can have, everything. I know he's a genius. That's a given. That's not what I'm there to work on. I'm there to work on the other part of him. The other part is to reach that other, that's his soul. And, and do I, at the end, I'm just saying to him, what do you want to do? You could do anything, you know? And just be bounced there for it. But in the end, it's like me. It's, it is father, son, but it's, it has all sorts of other elements. But you are, go ahead. I was just going to say that he's, he's saying that what you've chosen to exploit in my character is not a flaw. This relationship I had with this woman is not of character flaw. This was an amazing relationship I had, and because I had it, I've really lived. 
Um, and, and, and that's what he tells Will. And essentially, Will's only comeback is, well, then why aren't you doing that now? Why have you stopped? And we always felt the char characters were parallels. You know, they were both kind of stagnant when they meet each other. And because of this interaction, they end up moving on in, in, a, in a healthy way. When did you know that you wanted at least to entertain, if not to be whatever you are? <laughs> There was that time when uh, I saw my mother. <laughs> when did I know? Um, I think it was after high school. Really? Yeah, first year of college. I knew that you know, there was kind of slight tendencies that way. <laughs> you did um, have tendencies. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Just performing. <laughs> what is that about? Nothing. What are you doing? Better late than never. No, I, it was, I think it, it occurred in college where I took this improvisational theater class, and something was so freeing about that that I flunked out all of my political science courses. But did well in improvisational oh, theater. Oh, amazing. Yeah, we did it. Oh, very well. Very well. And it seems to, the to man have done... born. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Lord, yes. Tis that thing that I do well now. It is spoken thus. I have brought my mind hither. And my mind will flow thusly upon the questions thou hast riddled me. And know, my friend, that in the end, you must suppose that Charlie Rose knows. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. So that was, you know, that was the beginning where it really started to kick out and it's been like pretty much from then on doing this is there one great thing you want to do I mean is it this coming do you get more satisfaction from this kind of thing mm -hmm. or do you in the end get the most satisfaction when you're out there with an audience it's it's equal in different yeah. ways I mean it's like comparing hang gliding and you know spelunking I mean this one is a kind of a the idea of how intimate this piece is and, and when it really and when it works and it reaches people on that intimate level, it's just as meaningful to me as performing live. It's different, and it, you know, it, but it gives me the same satisfaction. But performing live is is this extraordinary. You know, it's 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 cheaper than Prozac, <laughs> and it's this great release and this amazing yeah. kind of fulfillment of well, well, the one. The one caveat is it's performing live, and when you're really creating. I mean, you like when you asked him, does he is this old stuff or new? <laughs> yeah, now, that's an old line, my friend. I've heard that one. <laughs> but when you really find a new piece, then there's something wonderful. The creation, the idea of when you create is that's that's extraordinary. That I really. Uh, but do you sit down and write this stuff at all? No, I just I basically it's a free associate. Yes. Free that sounds like a law firm. <laughs> free, free associates. associates. Jung, Jung, and Freud. <laughs> All right, we're free associates. Raise your right hand or your left. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> it's, it's like, what do you do? Whatever, your, free mother associates, whatever your mother tells Whatever your mother tells you to. If it's not one thing, it's your mother. <laughs> Stay with me and here we go. It's like putting that say by hand, walk away, your mother will know you better. By the year 2000, Robin Williams had already appeared in more than 30 feature films. This conversation centered on the challenge of acting and improvisation. What you should do is combine Shakespeare and stand-up. We could. We could. Is this not a chicken that I have held? Did not the two Jews enter the bar and on entering find that it was theirs? All is undone to the Muslim that drink the scotch. I shall know thy name. This show, one rose yet there sits and yet all time. Outside the day the Wall Street crumbles, Nasdaq like bungee rises. Is it a between these, this fall of some, till Bill Gates doth open the windows of time and Rome will be. We will all be undone and yet simply find ourselves waiting for this real time. Oh, till Bill yet not knowing why the intern hath done a trick of tongue but not knowing her name she hath gone away gentle monica know not your time <laughs> the ties that bind he doth wear for thee ay you are simple and free and till kenneth star doth shine anon we will not hear this till the moon above is gone oh fixed <laughs> thing charlie rose the time is yours <laughs> For you, my lord. Oh, for you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Shakespeare's only place, so that's the way you like it. Shakespeare rules. I do like it. Um, that's a great Venice, California Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare rules. Dude, tights. Go with it. Shakespeare rules. No. Yes. Did you ever see that? There was a great article, I think, in Los Angeles Magazine. It was uh, the studio's notes to Shakespeare. No. What did uh, you say? Who is this character, Yorick, and why do we need him? <laughs> it's like a great thing about, uh, can we make the character more likable? <laughs> 
<laughs> Does his father have to die? You know, <laughs> can the ghost be less of a hallucination oh, and more of a right. family friend? Can we change the ending? Can the ending be happy? <laughs> yeah. Does he have to die? Can't he wake up <laughs> and look on? And doesn't he need a girlfriend? Yeah. And does she have to die, too? It's so bleak. <laughs> yeah. We really want to go. Can it be called Portland? <laughs> That's why you're leaving this business temporarily. Temporarily, yeah. You get tired are. of those notes. <laughs> like, when I saw Popeye again, I remember that an agent called me and said, Robin, can't you open your other eye? I went, no, he only has one. <laughs> yes, it's called Pop Eye. <laughs> he was thinking it'd be much more, and the character would be more likable if he could open both eyes. He said, no, pal, that's the way he's been for 50 years. <laughs> oh, I can't see. Oh, it's all different. You want, can we understand him? No, that's part he mumbles. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, it's just. It's the business, you know. It's yeah. always that thing of, maybe that's why stand-up appeals, because there's no rules. Is there any fear of failure when you're up there? Oh, yeah. But I guess you kind of have to get over that and take a chance because you have to really, you have to fail in order to find the new. I mean, that's what's been nice about going in these clubs that sometimes... To, you have to fail to find the new. Yeah, you have to kind of go through, you have to kind of take the chance of going, there, even bomb, I guess. But it's like to really kind of let go and to say to really, because it, it kind of peels away. What happens is it shakes you up, it scares you, and then you'll go back and work harder. And then you'll, it's like the old, it's all, I guess maybe it's the same way of... On anything where you you know you, you you kick it out, it doesn't work. But then you come back and your mind goes, try step two, <laughs> go to phase two now. Yeah. Don't go, f don't fall back. And I'm going for the blue stuff. Stay no, with me. Stay with cool. We're going ahead. <laughs> yeah. We're going towards the comedy wasteland. <laughs> You're standing on it. Look. Segways. I don't need no second segways. Come on, <laughs> go with me. Get going. Fight through it. Don't be. <laughs> and you find you know you go out and eventually somehow something will kick in. That's why it takes a while, but if you have the courage, you can do it. 2002 was a year of change for both Robin Williams and myself. It was directed by Mark Romanek in One Hour Photo. It was his first psychological thriller. I was recuperating from heart surgery that would also become a topic of many of our conversations. <laughs> Come on now, son. Stop, shut up. I got a new heart. Leave me alone. Come on now. A new valve. We got it right there. One, one valve. You know. one valve Come on, head it down by sin. <laughs> While you wait. <laughs> no, we, went down to the, we went down to the pig farm. <laughs> Bobby, we got another one half for Master Rose. Get me Louise, the good one. Yeah. Give me Louise, a big valve. Yeah, Louise ready. We've been fattening her up. Fattening her for a week. Yeah. She's got the biggest valve I've ever seen. That's right? what we need. He's a big boy. We need a big valve. Big boy. Bring the big boy. <laughs> and make sure it's healthy because Mr. Rose wants to live yeah. a long, long time. Don't bring me Teddy. He's not, <laughs> he's not so good. Teddy. Teddy sleeps all the time. I saw that pig. He's smoking the other day. It's hard to see a pig with little cloven hooves. <laughs> It's not the one we want. No, no we want the one. We want the young one, the big one, the right one. Yeah, you don't want to smoke war. <laughs> Though you made these three movies in which you play a bad guy. Right. Was there some need in your, was there some reason you wanted to go out and, and tackle yes. things that you hadn't done before? I wanted to have uh, people to understand my <laughs> inner self. No. I never meant to hurt anybody. They shouldn't have been there. They should never have looked at me that way. <laughs> I wanted to I just... Had to, I had these demons and I had to get them out. My head was like a fishbowl and the bubbler was broken. I had... <laughs> that's a bad one. Even the therapist would go, ask him about that. But yeah, I think the idea was as an actor yeah. wanting to play those characters because, as Anthony Hopkins said, they're no long, longer bound by the laws of likability. Yeah. That you have a character that is can be so... You know, and in this case, so kind of normal, hyper normal, yeah. and, and banal in many ways, that you no longer have to be charismatic. And, and we went out of our way to take away all of that. Like right off the bat, Mark designed the makeup with Cherie Minns to be very much totally opposite of who I am. You know, thinning the hair, blonding right, the right. hair out, glasses, clothes that I would not want to keep the single item of. <laughs> Close it if you set on fire. Even the fire would go, I don't, know. I don't want it. Yeah. All right. Do you specifically aware of the fact that you, you don't want people to see Robin Williams? You want them to Very see the much. character? That's what we started off front, and that's why it was great to have Mark, because he would monitor it very much and say, you know, that, that's not Cy. Yeah. And it was great to have, because it's, it's, it's about, once again, it's all the details, the minutia, everything in that's the sets. It's all part of it. It all fits in. Someone said another thing. One day I was walking in the Walmart, and I disappeared. That's a great compliment. Yeah, it means sure. that all they of a sudden... They didn't see Robin. Yeah, I mean, but also they didn't see Cy. Yeah. <laughs> that he disappeared and became part of it. Yeah. And that, 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 that type of 
detail has been really lovely and interesting to have, and it's the thing that you said, Dion Arbus said, that the more detailed you are in your work, the more universal it is. Yeah. And the behavior and all those little things that people, people have come up to me after and said, I love your shoes. I went, thank you. No, I mean in the movie. <laughs> and they love the fact that when I walk, yeah. you know, it's that, that, you know, that kind of the squeakiness of that. Everything gets under yeah. people's skin, the, the sound, the images. That's a great thing. Do you have to put brakes on an instinct to improvise? No, because the, like we talked in the beginning, I would have moments to just blow the doors off. I couldn't be, I, if I got method, and sometimes even Mark had to say, you're getting too tense with it, because I would go method and be, I've got to do this, and, and be going, and he'd go, just blow it out for a moment. I'd go yeah. blow it out, then come back and be very free, and be very kind of calm. There's kind of a residual energy that you said existed afterwards, which was great. Well, I think, I think it, you know, there's a lot of tension that's created because we know Robin Williams from, you know, talk shows and the comedies mm -hmm. and the stand-up. So we know that he's got this volcan volcanic amount of, you know, of energy. So when he's playing this very repressed, restrained character, we know he's repressing on Volcano. Mm -hmm. And that creates a lot of tension. If another actor, we might suspect he's, you know, repressing a hiccup, it's not as tense. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but it, uh, yeah, and it keep, keep that going and it, you're just, you're charged up. But it helped to have that kind of freedom to go off and then you come back and then there's this thing where you're very much there and present and people would say that they're you know registering when you're just watching someone that they would pick up on a lot of things when that's very good that's what we wanted that you when you have a character most of the time it's just observing yeah which is a very interesting delicate line to walk where you have you're looking at other people and you have to be with this kind of mixed bag of envy anger all these different things kind of going through not just one emotion but many like as in life where you lots of things are going on simultaneously <laughs> which is great I don't know how to ask this question, but I'm interested in the answer. Is it where do you, where are you, and where do you want to go now in terms of this? With what I've been doing, yeah, the yeah. same. I want to keep doing interesting movies like this, and you know, I'm, I'm 51, so I'm in getting towards Walter Brennan. Like, <laughs> you good at characters, <laughs> but I, I want to do interesting films, work with interesting people, and you know, that's because you get to a certain point, you say, what are you leaving behind? And if it's movies like this, I say, great. Yeah, you know, right. it's something. That has an effect and that you know kind of has a you know has a half-life that's a wonderful thing doing the stand-up has another thing that it, it seems to get it affects people in a way and to have access to both it's like you know Brex said having passports to many countries <laughs> that i get the passport to do the hbo and then get yeah. the passport to do this and it kind of takes people by surprise but that's great so people keep guessing that year would be one of Robin Williams' most prolific. 2002 saw him star in three feature films and an HBO special. And after 16 years, he had returned to stand-up. It would think that, that comedians may have a certain brand of friendship because... Oh, it's tough, you know, but it's a tough love. Because it's, it's a tough love business. And because in the beginning, everybody was hanging out at the club, just watching oh, and yeah, learning. And, yeah, and you, you, you were know. there together, and then it kind of, you kind of go... Your a story. shared pain. Oh, yeah, a mutual... <laughs> There we are, uh, there, dead men walking, <laughs> yes. dead men talking. It's like that thing of, you know, and then it kind of, you go your separate ways, but you still, you'll see people and go, oh, what's up, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's very interesting. Like I saw Richard Pryor a couple of, like a month ago. He came up and he wanted to go see San, uh, to see, uh, not San Quentin, <laughs> come back. He wanted to see Alcatraz. And yeah. we took him to the island. It was amazing. You to took see. Richard Pryor to Alcatraz. Yeah, and he, and he got him off, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he just... He, he wanted to go see it. And it was amazing. Did he call you and say, or just somebody said, Robin, get me to the island. <laughs> yeah. I want to go and see that. You know San Francisco. I know you do, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take me to the island. You, you know Willie, too. You can oh, Willie, Willie to Brown. open the door. Willie Brown. Yeah. Okay. Willie Brown, hardest working man in show business. <laughs> Willie Brown, work it up, brother, please. I want to say that it's an honor. Yo, sister, please. <laughs> Willie Brown, work in the room. Yeah. But it was, it was so good to so, know but, him. But for, and Jonathan him? Winters, I, you know, he came up. The weird thing is for Jonathan, his wedding anniversary is September 11th. Yeah. Rough day. So yeah, right. I took him Tough. to a Giants game. And, and, you know, it was so yeah. great to have he and his wife up. And, you know, just he had a good day. And for me, knowing him, meeting comedians like Jonathan, Don Rickles. Yeah. Oh, man, that's just. And you stand there and you're like a little kid. A brotherhood, kid. Yeah. A brother, but more like uncle or like yeah. the, the master, the sensei, Buddha. Yeah. When around Jonathan, it's like being around the great one. Oh, I remember when... Oh, he did a great thing. A man was kissing yeah. a woman in front of us, and they were doing it for a long time, and he leaned over and said, he's sucking the ugliness out of her. <laughs> <laughs> and not so loud, John. But you hang out with those guys, and you can't help but feel, you know... And someone like... I got to know Rod Steiger before he died, and for me, the stories, he would just... You just want to, you want to get that stuff on tape sometimes, oh, so people... Oh. 
could hear all the stuff that you know these guys have gone through, like Walter Matthau, and no. meeting those people, or the few times, the one or, once or twice I met Billy Wilder, that there's such a gift that they, they give you these, this kind of sense of history, but, you know, like a knowledge born of, you know, yeah. great, great history, yeah. like yeah. Walter being in the Battle of the Bulge, and Steiger Walter, being... Walter Matthau was in the Battle of the Bulge? Big time. Right. And My Steiger was, was on a destroyer. Serious? My, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And yeah. these guys will tell you, and those stories alone, you're like this, and then they'll tell you, you know, being in plays and doing, doing movies, and then... It's this amazing thing, because all those guys who came out of World War II kind of went into acting as kind of like this thing you do on the G.I. Bill. Yeah, <laughs> like right. Steiger said he went to an acting class because he heard girls were there. Yeah. You know? It wasn't kind of, uh, the theater's going, there's chicks. Yeah, I know, I know. It's I crazy, I don't know what the two of them I think a lot of actors got started that way. I and think so, too. <laughs> and comics, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's that girl doing? Hey, hey, hey. hey. It's like the old guy, you know, the comic making love. Oh, that was wonderful. What show did you see? First or second? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that old, yeah, that thing. But no, that's, that's, old, that's great, very old. Old, old joke. <laughs> yeah, bring it back. From, I remember yeah. that joke from yeah. 1929. But it, the same thing is being said. Do you ever, I, mean, I think about like Winter. Somebody ought to be sitting with him and having yeah. a forever conversation about recording. I got a call last night uh, from a friend of mine saying, I just had, this happens to me a little bit, and I don't have time to do as much of it as I ought to. And he, somebody said to me, I had the most amazing dinner last night. And he named the guy that he had dinner with. Mm -hmm. He said, he's got the most fabulous stories oh, God, man. about the beginning of Hollywood. Oh, yeah. And he said, you have got to talk to the guy. You got to. And, and you got to get it. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. have to get it down on, you know, in some, in some medium that won't go away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, you hear from all of them and they tell you stories that you're just going, oh, my yeah. God. And it's. You know, it's like hearing the first, you know, the audition tapes of, you know, Jimmy Stewart. Ah, line. <laughs> you know, you want to hear all these things, and, you know, and they tell you stuff that you just, that's hysterical. And, yeah. but also powerful, you know, coming through the depression, you know, making movies and, you know, being in movies with, like, people that they, you know, like Bogart mm. talking, mm. Uh, <laughs> with, you know, Don <laughs> Rickles and all these people, and there's this amazing interaction. And meeting Brando, I got to meet him once. And? It was insane. It was wonderful <laughs> to see him just to go around with this man. <laughs> and I'm just going, oh, you know, there he is. You're going, I don't know, it's crazy. Do you have any butter? <laughs> but he was, it's, he's an amazing guy. All of these guys have so much to tell and teach. Yeah. And that's, Brando actually put together an acting class and, you know. Oh, and put it on tape. Yeah. Have so, you seen I mean, the I think, did, no. he, didn't he get guys like you to help him? Yeah, people came and showed up. But and I think here's what he's doing is kind of doing what you talked about, giving back and, you know, saying, Kind of sharing what he knows, and it sometimes he'll ramble on and says, "I don't know what that means," <laughs> but he, but he's saying, but also, but uh, sometimes he just say something. You go, "Whoa!" It is that kind of Buddhist yeah. moment. Yeah, you do yeah. have it. I mean, there are moments in which you just say, "Yeah, there is so... a Zen Cohen," yeah, you know? exactly. and then there's Sam Cohen, and then there's a times when show business in those days there was no movies. We were just doing this in front of a cave wall. How many Cro Magnons does it take a light of fire? And it was all of this stuff that they tell you. Yeah, I think you have to get it on tape, and it helps to have people. Just you know, being like a catalyst and just letting them go, because yeah. they'll tell you stuff, and it's all, and then they want to tell you stuff, you know. Yeah. And it's important because it's almost you know, it's like the verbal record yeah. or visual, verbal and visual both, because they light up because you see them talk about it and they just remember it. And yeah. They, yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, baby, to have an audience again. It's in even part. an audience or someone. Yeah, it's the audience again combined with, yeah, and remembering it again. Science is an interest of yours. Oh, it's kind of fascinated by it. It's kind of my brother. Started off as an optical physicist and then teaches science in <laughs> yeah. Memphis. Optical physicist. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, you yeah. know, what's that? <laughs> yeah. But it's anyway. like, you know, but I'm always kind of fascinated by it and, you know, the potential for it, you know, especially when they're talking about the human genome. Yeah. And, what the things of, you know, working on, you know, send in the clones. Yeah. <laughs> there was yes, a, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> I met a Nobel Prize physicist. He said, what did you do? I developed a specific gene therapy for a very specific form of cancer and it's, it really will solve our problems for the next 20 years. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just having lunch. <laughs> but you meet them, and they're very, very kind of quiet true, people who've solved you know, the problem. We're figuring like, out how the brain thinks. Yeah, we're basically you know, worked out, you know, we'll total neurosis. Yeah. You know, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. <laughs> and what you're, do you do? Yeah, well, I, 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 I talk on television. I make noises. I mean, talk on television. Yeah, I make noises. Yeah, I make noises. Yeah, yeah Peter Lorre says, I make faces. <laughs> I like to make faces. <laughs> Why won't they let me into the? I never did anything wrong. <laughs> I was never hurting where, any of us. Where was that from? It was, uh, oh, actually, he had a couple, but it was an M, which was, you know, but that was in German, but he had the 
He did a monologue once on a television show where he talked about, my head is like a fishbowl and everyone sees inside of it. I can't imagine Ed Sullivan going, I was Peter Lorre right now, doing a, a wonderful monologue from Psycho, doing a incredible sociopath. What musical instruments do you play? I tried to play the saxophone once and a, a great, they had this wonderful <laughs> black uh, saxophone player who said, don't hurt it. <laughs> You're hurting the instrument, you know. Be kind, do it. Be kind, yeah. yeah. You don't, you know, finger it, treat it like a woman, not like you're trying to grab yourself. <laughs> it sounds like a way of being, you know, sodomized. Let it go. <laughs> My favorite is you listen to those old blues records. Oh, and you, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Like you and Bonnie Raitt's going out to find all these great old blues artists. Yeah. I don't I remember it was 1927. I had just gotten out of prison for the seventh time. I wrote this song called Stay Away From Me. I can't remember all the other words, but this song I was written after a night of lovely evening with a woman who I found out later on was a man. But we had ourselves some wonderful love. Yeah, it, it was, was all it you was never know. Before I found that out. night I said, I looked down in your thighs. You greeted me with a happy surprise. I didn't know. And it's all, you know, for me, I would love to play music, but I haven't had the skill or the learning. Or as Peter Cook said, I'd love to be a lawyer, but I never had the learning. You know? I never had the learning for that. But did you have the ear for it? Somewhat. I just didn't have the yeah, hand you, for it, you know, yeah, the but, ability but, to kind of play it, you know. To, yeah, but to do what you do. Yeah, there's a musicality There is a musicality. Yeah, I mean, there really a is. A, to it. There's rhythm, there's musicality, and there's a pitch. There is. Yeah. Some people are higher pitch. <laughs> Some people are pitch like that. Some people pitch and catch. Do That's you a, paint? No, I wish, but no. I, do you create art at all other than what you do as I a think performer? I paint visually. I, no, I no. dance. I, no, I haven't painted. It. My mother used to sculpt, but no, yeah. I never did. Yeah. But you read a lot. Yeah, that's my main thing is reading and kind of sampling. Oh, as, my, as my lovely wife says, dust jacket literature. <laughs> I'll just be kind of halfway through going, okay, that's enough. Yeah, yeah but it's good, to, especially now, you know, reading all these different histories of like, you know, start reading about the Crusades going, okay, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute, there's a, there's a bit of rep repetition going on here. And you start to read all about, you know, that gives me a sense of things repeating, which is not good. But, and science, once again, of, you know, yeah. global warming when... Right. Uh, I said the, the Coyote Accord. No, it's Kyoto, George. That's a good car. No, that's Toyota. No, she's a great singer. No, that's LaToya. You know, I'm just going, forget the dysphagia. Come over here, son. Work with me. Dad, can I do this? When Robin returned to this table five years ago, the quick wit and self-deprecating humor was still there. But now he was having health issues, and my friend became a bit more reflective on both his career and his life. So what are you doing in Weapons of Destruction? Self-destruction? Self-destruction. Um, talking about pretty much everything. Everything that's kind of happened, the heart surgery. Yeah. I mean, the idea of even the valves. They gave me the choice of getting, you know, different valves. The porcine valve, which I said is wonderful. You're already inoculated for swine flu. <laughs> and you can find truffles. Yes. And a bovine valve, which is great because yeah. you can crap standing up. You're more stubborn. But, you know, but it is that weird. Play, and play in the dirt. Play in the dirt. How are you doing? And then college kids tip you over at night. Yeah. But, and, and I thought, you know, because you know, after the heart surgery, you find yourself yeah. getting very emotional. And yeah. I thought, I got so emotional, I thought instead of a valve, they gave me a tiny vagina. <laughs> I know it sounds like an Elton John song. But <laughs> well, you don't. Tiny vagina. So when did you know you were not doing so well? I was doing. I was out on the road doing the tour initially, and I would, I would finish shows and just be just burnt. Like this is more than exhaustion. Something else is going on. You know, you get that really run down thing. Yeah. And then when they they went and they looked at the valve, they did the angiogram, <laughs> which right. it was kind of weird, and it was just like. <laughs> The, the leaking was like, and then it was yeah. causing you, you know. Yeah. Oh, yes. I and know. look at you, Charles Rose, <laughs> with your French valve. Huh? We had to look a long way to find a nice piece of him for him. Bring the nice vache for Charles, huh? You see? But no. Charlie, these are the choices you have here. Look around. Cow, pig, chicken heart, if you want. Small, but you lay a good, plum, fresh egg. Big horse. Big horse. Oh. Oh. And then you can hang out of the shorts. <laughs> How proud will you be there? Look at Charles. He's happy to be here. But it's crazy. I mean, all of that stuff has been part of the act. Yeah. And, but how do you feel today? Wonderful. 
I'm like 98% there, mm -hmm. I think. Letterman, when I talked to him, and he said quintuple bypass. I know. He said, I mean, he almost really went down for the count. Big time. I think they went in. and well, like they, Within they, hours, he was yeah, saying, yeah, within hours, went, I, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said no, it took said, a year. He said, I, well, I think he went for a checkup, and he said, you're going to an operation in an hour. He said, oh, yeah. An hour? Oh, big time. Yes. I had a doctor in Miami who wanted to operate the next day, and then I had, there was a wonderful Italian surgeon mm -hmm. who was kind of standing there going, you may not want to go with the guy who wants to go on vacation, <laughs> you know. So we, yes. you, you get to pick. I was, yeah. I had the luxury of being able to look for the best doctors. Yeah, and, I did and too. And I actually, finally yeah. found one who'd done four thousand surgeries, all of them amazing, <laughs> all of them successful. Yeah, you don't want a guy who's done six. Three didn't go so well. Okay, let's see what we can do. Like a like a Vegas dealer. Okay, everybody, let's try this. So how and you you were how long were you in recuperation? About, I think it was like. Three months, literally, to kind of yeah. just to the, ready to go back out again. Yeah. Go but back you out feel again. better today. Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. I mean, I do too. I mean, much better. Oh, that's the idea. <laughs> I know, yeah, I you do. don't want to be going. Nice. I'm to getting bed. a lot of oxygen to my brain now. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, and it's really <laughs> remember things. You appreciate the little things like breath. <laughs> exactly. You know, and that exactly. idea. You do. It, yeah. it is much better. Yeah, I feel I'm back. Yeah. It's wonderful. You were here at this table when I had my first, tra my first valve transplant. Right. Here it is. Good luck with that thing. I'm happy about that. Now. You know what happens to me as I walk around the street? People will look at me and they'll say, Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> well, it's better than this. You see people go, <laughs> They go, and you go like, <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you have? <laughs> what I had? I had a penile transplant. <laughs> What'd you do? Ready from a pig? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, come over here, Robin. You gotta pull this carriage through the park. I told him right there ever since he had that transplant. He's been pulling my carriage through the park. It's been so great. Has to stop once in a while. Yeah, but that's all right. It's been Hello, doctor, could I maybe get another, another appointment? <laughs> yeah, another appointment. What's happened? I don't know. Here's the deal. I need two horseshoes. Yeah. Yeah. And how's that mare? What do you mean a stud fee? <laughs> How old am I? <laughs> Four. Four, yeah. Bobby, how are you doing? Welcome to the genetic thing. Eventually go, how's that? I feel good since I had that pig valve put in. A lot of people are saying it hasn't affected me. Charlie said I should get a fig valve. I don't know what's the matter. And people go, Robin, hi, it's Michael on line two. What are you doing? No one knows. This is my boy, Gil. I don't know, you know. <laughs> Bob, you know, ever since that genetic research has come through, and the Botox is working, and the kids are happy, how you feel? You feel better since the elephant hormone? <laughs> What are you doing? I went, that would be amazing. That's the next step. You know that people are going to, you know, people now, you see people get those little contact lenses with the goat eyes. How are you doing? Great party. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Wow. That was good. Was that? That was fun. That was one of the best. That was a, a wild riff, as they say. That was free range. I yeah, well, like it. That's I right. love when you go open field. Charlie gives you open field. He does. You go full tilt with Charlie. That's right. He'll show him what you can do. Yeah. <laughs> Get, bring out everything. <laughs> Throw everything in the mix. Charles exactly. is going to go for it. He's going to like it. Yeah, yeah. Charles has a valve. <laughs> Isn't it nice when people do come up and say to you, way to go. Way to go. Oh, no, comes no, go. You are better now. <laughs> he who runs like a horse will have a great day. Hey, 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 Charles is good. He is now Indeed. happy. The brain Indeed. is back on life. Exactly. Can and, he can, and he can breathe, and he can sleep, oh, oh, and time. he can walk and talk. All, all of those all things. Of those things That's a great make a difference. Gift. Yeah, huge. How much of this is simply natural comedic talent? I mean, I think Lenny Bruce said it best. You start off trying to win you, you, the attention of your mother. Yes. Just for one of these. You yeah. know, is this thing on? And then you work from there, and then I'm, I think it becomes... I'm thirsty, so, mother. Yeah, please. <laughs> Laugh at me, because I'm so thirsty. It's maybe now. That was funny. But it's the maybe idea. that was funny. Yeah, good luck. I think as it goes along, it becomes something you learn and you work on, and then... But the moments of, like, if you do get, like, the open field, like you saw the other thing, it's just yeah. sometimes you just get a gift and you go with it. Yeah.
Yeah, but that's a gift. I mean, I, mean, I don't know 10 Some people. Some would say touch. <laughs> it's like, it's a, Oliver Sacks used to say it was voluntary Tourette's. Is that what he said? I, I, you know, it's, and that's why I think even you look at Joe Biden and Joe says things that even people with Tourette's go, no. <laughs> no, Joe, no, no, Joe, wow, no, Joe. But I think sometimes it is both. Yeah, it's, it's a nice combination of the two. Yeah. There are few people that can do what you do. You mean that are actually out of institutions? Yes, and that are not. Yeah, there's a few, and there's, and there's, a, there's older ones like Jonathan Winters, yeah. younger ones like Patton Oswald, and people who are just free and, and, just, and, you just, and they can go anywhere with it, which is kind of wonderful. Jonathan was your hero. Big time, still is. Still I mean, is. I mean, whenever I hang with Where him. Where does he live? He lives in Santa Barbara, and it's great because you'll see him and he'll be, he'll talk to people. <laughs> Tell a woman me. once in he character? Passed, no, in well, not really in character. Once he, in character, kind of yeah. many characters. Right, many characters. Hard to pick one. He once parked in a handicapped parking zone. A woman said, "You're not handicapped." And he went, "Madam, can you see inside my mind?" And at that point, he went, "Boom!" Oh but God, he, he's amazing. He's so just good. To, oh, to hang with him is the best because he just goes. Well, and, is he ever on television? Does he do anything anymore? Yeah, he does a lot of different things. I mean, I, he'd prefer to do more, but I think the idea of seeing him is always the best. Yeah, and he's you know. He's, for me, he's the Buddha. He's the one that kind of, the <laughs> gift that I got from him. <laughs> when, when, when you go need a recharge, oh, big time. you go see him. Or, or call him and just call him. Who is that? <laughs> I'm sitting in a hot tub full of Indian head nickels. I'm trying to wash them all. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Robert Wilson, I love, send me money. <laughs> yeah. But he always makes me laugh, and that's kind of the thing. You go to him and I go, oh, cool. Yeah. And I've also been, I got to hang out with recently Mort Saul, who's amazing. I, you know, I didn't oh, know. the best. When you went into television and then went into film with Good Morning Vietnam and all of that, was it a sense of coming home for you? Because that was what you were trained to do at Juilliard. You weren't trained to do stand-up at Juilliard. No. I mean, um, doing television, I mean, it was, well, the television was more well, like stand-up. Acting. Stand -up. acting. Yeah. I mean, when I finally did movies, that was like... That was what I was trained. I mean, that's yeah. kind of like... So that came easy to you when you made that transition? No, not easily. I mean, because at first when you're doing film, example, I was doing uh, The World According to Garp, and I improvised. Uh, the, uh, it was the first day of shooting. Who directed? I forgot. George Roy Hill. Yeah. And I improvised a line, and uh, yeah, he made a face like this, like... Mm -hmm. went, not good. He went, no. <laughs> Just <laughs> say the lines, say the lines, and commit to that. I went, okay. And that was the first great lesson. The second great lesson came from Peter Weir, who said... You know, you have great power listening. And I went, really? He went, yes. That's the second part of the equation. When, to, when you listen to someone, it's quite fascinating. And, and, and stillness is very powerful. And I went, second great lesson, you know? And third great lesson is always find out where catering is. <laughs> but it was the idea of these guys were giving me these great lessons. Oh, listening in terms is great. Of, yeah, and the idea of really listening and the idea of what it means to be engaged in listening and I, you find and the other great gift was jeff bridges who said whenever there's an accident in terms of filming not like something really falling down but a line may get flubbed or something goes off he said that's a gift because that forces you to be in the moment and deal with it rather than trying to improvise and create that it's something that happens and everybody's respond now, to the respond to the respond to what's going on immediately and it was yeah. another kind of oh cool and don't be afraid to try those things, and it forces everybody to kind of engage, as in life, with the, the immediate moment. So I think he has a very good movie out. He's getting oh, enormous attention. He is one of the great American actors. I, do, I couldn't kind of, agree more. Yeah, and he's underappreciated, because I think he's so natural that people think that's just him. Going, each and every one of his performances is different yeah. and iconic. Yeah. And like, you know, the great Lebowski, and the dude is one of the great stoner characters of all time. Yes, indeed. If in California, it's a documentary. What does iconic mean? I think it means something that really just stands, that it is, for me, if, if someone's doing an impression, it's, uh, that becomes iconic, like, Chris Walken <laughs> is iconic and beyond. <laughs> It's and it's something that just stands on its own. Yeah, that is yeah. so distinct They've that it got, stands on its own. I love talking to him, don't you, oh, Chris Walken? because punctuation <laughs> is gone. <laughs> A friend once saw him, he was standing in a puddle with his socks and everything was, was, was just in his socks. And a friend said, what are you doing? He said, today, I'm an alligator. And they, went, they asked him, they asked him, he said, Chris, if you could have anything, anything you, you could have, what would you want? He said, a tail. Because then you'd know if I was happy, it would, my tail would be up and, and it would always move according to your emotions. I'm, I'm surprised, it. yes. question mark, <laughs> punctuation, <laughs> great, now, maybe. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Who else do you do that you love? Nicholson's the best just because he's, 
He's so out there. <laughs> he, he does things. I love the fact everybody in The Departed is doing hardcore Boston accents. He's going, I'm not going there. <laughs> Just out on my own. This is who I am, you know? <laughs> when he won his third Academy Award, I, I, I was standing with him. I had just won mine, and he, he stood up, and he, he was standing next to me. He went, Robbo, I've got one for every decade. <laughs> Good for you, isn't it? What a great night for me, yeah. I mean, have you ever bought that there's some connection between Tra I mean, tragedy tragic and, life and, yeah. and, no, and I mean, I think comedic what, talent? Well, comedic talent is a way that, you know, survival mechanism, yeah, I buy into that. It becomes that, you know, because mm -hmm. you, they went through it and they, it was part of the how they got through it. I mean, Richard Pryor said he had to be the funniest guy around because just to not get crap kicked out of him, mm -hmm. you know, and the idea of, and it was also him dealing with the childhood of his mother being, you know, um, you know, working in a whorehouse and the idea of, and the comedy, and when he really found characters, you know, because Richard Pryor, when he started off, was doing like Cosby, and he said that. Yeah. And then one night it snapped, and he went, I'm not doing this, I'm not tired of being this. And he found this other side of him, and it tapped into the anger and all the other things, but he was funny with it, so he can get it out. Yeah, I mean, he's one of those that everybody honors now. Big time. I mean, they really I used to see him performing at the comedy store, getting ready for a stand-up. And it was it's the most amazing thing because people want him to do Mudbone. He go, "Oh, you people! I, I, you do it!" <laughs> and he would do characters, and just you could see him just be, become possessed by these characters. And it was just amazing to see him do and just and, and go free range with it. Yeah. And then as soon as it was over, I could see him, and he was just kind of like. You could see the catharsis of it because he was totally free on stage. He can get out the demons. And did, did you have to get out demons? I don't know. No. Where are they? You know where we are, Robbo. <laughs> we hang right here. The demons, where are they? Let me live with you, boy. <laughs> come, on, come on here, Robbo. Talk to us. Talk, talk. You come got on, Robbo. It's on your back. Tell I've Charlie it. about the demons. <laughs> seen it on your back. Tell me. Hey, 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 Charlie. Charlie, where are we going now? Going to a strip club on Valentine's Day. Come on, Robin. It'll be fun. It'll play well with the wife. <laughs> the demons. What are you, the yeah. demons. They're, no, they're more like spirits, and they're in a glass. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. The spirits yeah. there. Where are you? Possessed. Uh, they were. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Jack Daniels. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, Bravo. You know, an optimist sees the glass half full, a pessimist sees it half empty. An, al an alcoholic goes, where's the bottle? I, I became an alcoholic even thinking about alcoholic. This, this is, thanks for the vodka, Charlie. Thing. Yeah, you're okay today? Totally. Okay. Then, well, that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's not. That's it's not, not the best term. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm better, and yeah. also I feel great, and yeah. that's kind of wonderful. But did you go through a certain kind of whatever? Y yes, I went through a certain kind of whatever. <laughs> Three years of heavy drinking. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. That's a nice. What are you doing? Welcome to the whatever center. Hi. 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 My name is Robin. I have a problem with whatever. <laughs> that's a nice <laughs> vague way. Is that the Hi, way they? Is, is that the way they actually do it? You have to stand up and say, I'm. I'm Hello, whatever. I'm Robin and I have a problem with whatever. I'm, I'm whatever. <laughs> yeah, finally, I'm, I'm uh, welcome to whatever. What does whatever look like? You're looking at whatever. Yeah, whatever. I'm whatever. 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 <laughs> I, I, did you do a lot of whatever? Yeah. yeah I, did. I used to do a lot of whatever. Wake up in a did field. Did whatever get you down? Yeah, wake oh, up in the road too. flare. Yeah, what are you doing? What's your name? <laughs> oh, my God. That's nice my valve. That's my valve. That valve. I told me, shut up. I love you, baby. <laughs> yeah, there was a problem with that. And then yeah. uh, I went to rehab in wine country just to keep my options open. <laughs> but. Uh, you came out the other side and went, yeah, yeah I'm back. And how were you different when you came out the other side? Dry. <laughs> I think a lot drier. And I think sober and also able to experience life and go, it's pretty yeah. amazing. It's kind of, before the heart surgery, one of the more sobering moments of just going, life is extraordinary. I don't want to miss it, you know? Oh, man. It's a oh, gift, you oh, know? Oh, man, I'm Dude, telling you. And to be spending most of the time there, I'll have <laughs> Where were you? I don't remember. <laughs> Got it. Go, You're absolutely right. To come right. back from yeah. that is like going, oh, look. And then you realize you do have family, friends, and people go, I appreciate you. And now yeah. I can actually remember what we're talking about. How cool yeah. is that? That's kind of the gift, you know? Yeah. And it's the, that's those things that you just, you, gratitude. That's the simple gratitude of like, yeah. It's good. Or as one guy said, every day above ground. <laughs> you know, much nicer. <laughs> but it's all those things. I really I appreciate them. Does stand-up make you a better actor? Yeah, it makes, I mean, stand-ups are fearless in that way, because you've got to be. You've got to put it out there. And the acting gives you the concentration. And like you'll see a lot of stand-ups when they act, they're really, they're not afraid to just be and to be warts and all, which is kind of what comedy is, too. And that's what's interesting. That's the same thing like when... Uh, Pat Oswalt's in a movie called Big Fan, and he's and he's fearless, and he's not it's not funny, but just playing this wonderful kind of nebbishy, awkward guy, 
but as a stand-up, I mean, he's not afraid to talk about anything, and mm -hmm. I think that kind of helps his acting the same way. For me, the stand-up, it just gives you this outlet that, you know, and you don't have to worry about it. I'm, and also the idea you don't have to always be likable. This mm -hmm. character is not likable. He's a nebbish. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I saw the movie A Serious Man. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, indeed. Uh, that man, the that Coen character, Brothers. that's so, that's such a nebbishy character, and by the end, you, you feel such sympathy, but you want to go, wake up! <laughs> These people are, Meshuggy, wake up! <laughs> First marks do! By the end, you just want to go, smack, get out! Yeah. It's pretty crazy that way, but as stand-up, I like both. I, yeah. I still keep doing both. I'm struck by the fact that Jerry Seinfeld wanted to go back, you wanted to go back. I mean, Sometimes it's, almost it's like economic, it... but I think it's more personal. Yeah. I think it's more, I don't think with Jerry, it's, you know, it's, it's actually not economic. Not at all. <laughs> I think it's, you get the joy from it. It is, yeah. the, the, I could say, is it a yeah. drug? There is a fix you get, and you also, and Chris Rock said it best. He said it's like being a boxer. You have to get out and have enough material to go the distance, like especially if you're doing more than 30 minutes or like an hour, an hour yeah. and a half. You've got to be ready for it, and it really helps. Some who have written about this tour have said it is more confessional. Almost. I think it, I mean, it's confessional. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I think the main thing that comes, I come away from the operation with is just that, I could say the same thing again, gratitude and just Me being. Me too. Oh, yeah. man. It's gratitude and yeah, life it's, it's, and appreciating yeah. life, warts and all, uh, and whatever, and, and, yeah. and coming out the other side of whatever and yeah. being able to go, yeah, man, I got all this, and, and looking at it all, and, and, we're, and we're in a weird way, in the country, we're going through this transition, are we going to make it? Yeah, I think we are. Mm. I think it's going to be a tightening period, and I think we're going to come through it. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, and I think, because that's when we, we deal with it, we, we kind of, and, and weirdly, we, we, we bitch about it and get angry, and we come through mm. it and go, okay, but when it comes down to it, we do work together. We, mm. we sometimes don't play well with others, but other times we do, and I think we can, and I think we're in that process now. For me, confessional, yeah, it's a little bit, I mean, as close as I can be to a, a confessional as a, as a 58 year old wasp, <laughs> you know that you know your mother and I. You know, well, I didn't grow up with that kind of. You got your best. I was like, you know, your mother and I are so happy. You know? My mother was a Christian scientist who had plastic surgery, so I'm like, how confessional is that? She was a Christian Dior scientist. It worked for her, didn't it? Yeah, it worked for her. Going, Darling, I believe in Mary Baker Eddy. It's like, yes, baby, sure, baby. Yeah, but that's, God will take care. God will take care. God, but for wrinkles, I need help. God, God had a good search. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine, Mom. Mm -hmm. It's like the lady on the Botox. I'm, Merry Christmas, darling. I wish I could express how happy I am. Merry, Merry Christmas. It's a wonderful Botox Christmas. Almost smiling now. Gathering around with friends and family. That's all I can feel. Oh, <laughs> There's your son, Zach. Funny. Big time. Is he really? Yeah, he's funny. Cody's funny. Cody does a great Chris Walken. Um, Zelda's as good as yours? No, much better. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, and I have, he hasn't really uncorked it for me. Zach is He funny. hasn't uncorked it for you? No, I mean, I think he's kind of been hanging back, waiting for the right moment. Yeah. Zelda's funny. She's, uh, oh, she's yeah. actually been acting, which has been great. She's done a lot of movies. Yeah, they are what? How old are they? Uh, Cody's 18, Zelda's 20, Zach's 25. Yeah. And it's pretty wonderful. And they're all going to be in show business? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Zelda's an actress. Zach it was kind of at first. Well, that's said, one. One. All one. right. Zach, I don't know. He may, he's got all sorts of different things he's been dabbling in. But he might or not? I don't think so. No, what do think, you think he's going to do? Well, he wants to go to Harvard Business School, so I think show business, unless it's directly <laughs> he involved to, production. No, he, wants, he wants to run things. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah, God there bless. you go. Um, he wants to run Google. Oh, please. <laughs> Netanyahu. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Cody's, I think, will be a writer because he's really, yeah. he's, ever since he's been 10, he's been writing really interesting fiction. So. You see yourself in each of them? Totally. But I also see someone totally different, which is wonderful. I see mm -hmm. a little bit of myself, but then I see this other combination, a combination of Marsh and myself, and then something that's just them, which is magnificent. And they all turned out really wonderfully. You know, there have been rough periods, but they've all turned out to be just mm -hmm. great human beings and really... You know, Zelda acting, but also it's more than just acting. When people said, you know, she's she's a very sweet and kind woman, I went, that's a, as great a compliment as saying she's yeah, a great actress. Right, yeah. That's kind of wonderful. Yeah. When they say your kids are wonderful people, you go, then we've done something right. You know. Robin Williams did many things right. He made us laugh and cry and think and feel. He lives on, especially in the hearts of his survivors: his wife, his brother, three children, and two stepchildren a giant among us.
Robin Williams dead at 63. The great thing about having Robin Williams at the table was that you never knew what was going to happen. Take a look and you'll see what I mean. Robin Williams is here, the only child of a Ford executive you grew up with mostly <laughs> his imagination to keep him company. He later found an audience for his comic talents and frenetic injury. <laughs> frenetic injury. Injury. Well, that happened yeah. later when I was 12. <laughs> What are you doing? All right, let's just start over. Okay. Keep the tape rolling. We'll roll again. We get... Take two. Charlie rolls. <laughs> Robin Williams is here, the only child of a Ford Motor Company executive. He grew up with mostly his imagination to keep him company. He later found an audience for his comic talents and frenetic energy as a stand-up comedian in the late 1970s. He first came to national attention in the television series Mork and Mindy. Yes, sir. He went on to a feature film career, a feature film career. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that has produced a string of critical and commercial successes. Both, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. Once again. <laughs> Oh, man, thank you. This has been fun, and good luck with that thing. I'm happy about that. Now. You know what happens to me as I walk around the street? People will look at me, and they'll say, Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it's better than if you people go. <laughs> they go, and you go like, All right. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have? what I have? I had a penile transfer. <laughs> What'd you do? Was it from a pen? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, come over here, Robin. You gotta pull this carriage through the park. I told him right there ever since he had that transplant. He's been pulling my carriage through the park. It's been so great. It has to stop once in a while. Yeah, but that's all right. It's been Hello, doctor, great. could I maybe get yeah. another appointment? <laughs> yeah, another appointment. What's happened? I don't know. Here's the deal. I need two horseshoes. Yeah. Yeah. And how's that mare? What do you mean a stud fee? <laughs> How old am I? <laughs> Four. Four, yeah. Bobby, how you doing? Welcome to the genetic thing. Eventually go, how's that? I feel good since I had that pig valve put in. A lot of people are saying it hasn't affected me. Charlie said I should get a pig valve. I don't know what's the matter. And people go, Robin, hi, it's Michael on line two. What are you doing? No one knows. This is my boy, Gil. I don't know, you know. Bob, you know, ever since that genetic research has come through, and the Botox is working, and the kids are happy, how you feel? You feel better since the elephant hormone? <laughs> What are you doing? That would be amazing. That's the next step. You know that people are going to, you know, people now, you see people get those little contact lenses with the goat eyes. How are you doing? Great party. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. I am pleased to have Robin Williams back at this table. Welcome back. Thanks. Here's my question. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. This yeah. is a question. Eight inches. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. No, that's what, what I like to do for a fishing pole. Just give a nice, you know, lead out eight inches when you're fly fishing. Send it out there and let, you know, let the bass hook it and then pull on it. Either that or a piece of C4. You throw that in there. How you, what, that's good. You see the bass fishermen there? I don't always have that thing where you put it out there and the bass are like, mm. I'd like to sit out there and you just, you know, a little C4 and then they come right up. Robin Williams for the hour. Thank you. Charlie Rose. Charlie Rose. <laughs> That's my man. I remember Charlie Rose, gentle Charlie, with the two valves. I said, Charlie, would you get that Parisian valve? But now Charlie can come and sing La Vie en Charlie. Hello. Oh, la vie la non, la vie en Charlie Rose. Oh, la ne ma ronde That's all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Thank wow. you and good night. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Just go let the camera keep rolling. <laughs> 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 Live with Charlie, Charlie Rose. <laughs> good thing there. I remember young Charlie Rose. I said, Charlie, go over there. And Charlie, even as a child, was doing interviews with his bear. 
He would line up all the little animals at a table, and he had a little tiny table, and the animal, and what are you up to, Teddy? And he had a picture, and he had just written down things, and even then he could, he just looked at the questions and, and the things, and he would look at it. Teddy, how long have you been stuffed? <laughs> and the bear was there, and, I, and then he would turn, and the other, uh, the other animals would just look at him, and he would turn. As a rabbit, do you feel fear near the bear? <laughs> and the rabbit, do you feel fear near this small stuffed animal? <laughs> Well, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny.